yank Fill the mission and the butt Put that on the stupid white Stay up, Jack Go ahead, set, jump I'll just try my best You Nothing Revelation Records has affected me in that it's absolutely changed my life. And I was I was hanging out in the hardcore scene, not part of like the Lower East Side, not part of New York, not part of sort of the you know the the uh, community of people from uh, from whom all these bands were drawn in the late '80s. So I came to Revelation sort of secondarily, like many of us did, meaning that I, I bought the records, I found the records and was amazed by them and, it, and, and just was so affected by it. But the, uh, the story that, that I always remember uh, <laughs> that, um, inspired, that just makes me laugh so much is that I was in Brass City Records right around the time that Inside Out and the Burn 7 Inches were coming out. And I was looking through, um, I was looking through records and there was somebody talking to Walt from Brass City Records. And the guy who was talking to Walt was, was talking about music. And of course, I'd heard about this character, Jordan, who was putting out music, you know, and, and, and he was part of Revelation. He was Revelation, and I didn't know him, of course. And so I'm looking through records, and all of a sudden I hear this guy, and he's talking to Walt from Brass City Records, and he mentions something about, you know, Revelation. And I walk over to him, and I said, you know, hey guys, I just heard you talking about Revelation Records. It's so incredible. And, you know, I love Revelation Records. It's, just, it's a, you know, such an amazing label. And Jordan at that point introduces himself. And I, I said to him, I was like, oh my God, you're Jordan. Well, I just want to say thank you so much for putting out all these amazing records. And it's so cool. Inside Out and Burn are coming up. I can't wait for these records to come out. It's so incredible. It's so awesome. And you know, I, I, uh, you know, I spend my time uh, juggling. And I, I love that you know, you're, you're doing these records because other than hardcore, like juggling is what matters to me in the world. And this is so awesome. Like hardcore is the best. I get done with this whole hardcore speech, right? And Jordan looks at me and he goes, wow, you juggle? And that was the thing that <laughs> mattered most to him out of everything I said. It wasn't that the records are coming out and, oh my God, what color vinyl are they going to be on? How many are going to be pressed? Where can I buy one? It's so cool you're delivering these records to, to Wall of Brass City. I come here all the time. Who cares? So you juggle? So we started this whole conversation about juggling. And over the past, I mean, however many years it's been since that day, um, you know, my relationship certainly with, with, with Jordan has been based on, uh, on juggling far more than it has been on, on hardcore. Um, but, uh, and I love that. And that, that to me is the essence in a way of revelation. I mean, there are many essences depending on who you talk to, but one of the essences is how humble Jordan is and how sincere he is and how revelation and its community has been built based on sincerity and based on bonds of friendship, not to use a, a pun or, you know, or, you know, a, a saying in hardcore. But I mean, it really has been. It's built, been built on this, this, this humbleness and sincerity over the years. So to see all these people show up is incredible. Not just because it's grown so much over the years, but because realistically, I mean, all the people who are showing up here are sincere and good-hearted and here for all the right reasons too, which is why there's been no fights whatsoever this weekend. And everyone's here just to be excited and celebrate what Jordan and Ray and Purcell put together, you know, you know, so many years ago. So it's been amazing and it's grown because things with integrity, things that have integrity and sincerity and honesty do in fact grow. We all gravitate toward those things in time. And that's why we've all gravitated here for the Rev 25 showcase. I would say if I had to pick my favorite Rev release over the years, um, that's so hard. Um, I would say the record I listened to most was probably the Inside Out 7-inch. I think the Inside Out 7-inch years ago. Um, Burn, I mean, huge, just just immense. Um, you know, I mean, I think about all the bands that are playing here and just what an intense influence they were on me. You know, of course, Into Another was huge, huge for me. And uh, I just loved how original and, and interesting and, and passionate they were always. And uh, you know, just passionate about doing something different, I should say. But I would say if I had to pick, if I had to pick uh, one record that I listened to the most years ago, certainly it was the Inside Out, Inside Out 7 Inch. That, that was just mind blowing. And the thing was is that all those records actually I just named, Inside Out and Burn and, um, and uh, Into Another, you know, all had something very unique about them. I mean, even Youth of Today, certainly, you know, um, who we can reflect on as just a straight edge hardcore band that was immense and amazing, was unique in terms of their sound and their ferocity and just their their attack. And uh, that was another, you know, just, you know, we're not in this alone. It's just 
forget about it. That record I just listen to all the time. But specifically with the Revelation releases that you know I listen to all, all the time, Inside Out 7-inch I think was the one. Uh, the first Rev band I listened to was probably Gorilla Biscuits. When I was like 16, I didn't really, I don't know, I just wanted to mosh. I listened to like metalcore. And I, pro I, pro I guarantee I said I didn't like Gorilla Biscuits without even listening to them. And then once I heard them, it like, I, I saw that there was like a message that I could relate to. And then I found bands like Judge and Chain of Strength. And being straight edge and realizing that they had similar views as me and it wasn't just weird mosh metal that I, didn't, I couldn't relate to at all. Uh, I don't know, kind of drew me in. Um, also, band, like later rev bands like Down to Nothing and stuff like that were obvious uh, bands that I loved. But yeah, um, I saw Gorilla Biscuits, I think it was six years ago when they did their reunion. And I don't know, that was pretty life-changing, I guess, as far as, like, hardcore shows. Because before then, I just went to, like, a lot of metalcore shows and stuff like that. And then Sound of Fury and, like, that Grill Biscuit show really, like, showed me in the direction that I am now. And, I don't know, going to hardcore shows, being into the type of music I'm into now. And what was, like, the first record you bought off Rev? Uh, the first record I bought on Rev was... I probably didn't buy it. I probably downloaded it. But I mean, realistically, the first record I bought was probably the most by Down to Nothing. And then I've, since then, I mean, I've bought, like, Judge, uh, the discography, because it's too expensive to get your hands on most other things. And then, uh, like, a Start Today record. And then bands like Inside Out also. Like, when I was younger, one of my friends showed me Inside Out because he said, you know, this is a singer of Rage Against the Machines band before. And I always like Rage's message. So. The thing is, I almost don't want to. I don't want to interrupt them. You know what I mean? Like, because I mean, how often does Toby and Arthur and Jordan get together to hang? But I mean, right? That's your. That's and that's your, just the most ridiculous, yeah, no, right. conversation ever. So uh, we just asked uh, Greg his uh, perspective and. Oh, you've well, already asked him a question. We already asked him a question. <laughs> so that's your right. turn. We need a new question. We need a new question. New question. All right. What's your favorite color? We'll start off with that one. This is different. No, it's the same. It is? Yeah, it's the same. You can kick it off. I think my favorite color is red. <laughs> Next question. Well, yeah. <laughs> what does Revelation Records mean to you? It is one amazing label. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> All right. All right, La last question. What does Street Edge mean to you? Not drinking. Not smoking. Not being a dick. Head. Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. This is the future. Of Beautiful. <laughs> this, is the, this is the future. This is a try. hardcore collective interview <laughs> of all time. Right there. When we do that's band it. interviews. We gotta do that like each person in the band's gonna say. Word. That, 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 that's gonna be the end of the interview with Greg right there. Is he that, crying? That, that's, that's, <laughs> that's the future. That is the future hey. of interviews. Beautiful. Uh, Rev is by far the biggest inspiration for me for starting a hardcore label. Ever since the first time I got, ever since I got my first copy of Warzone Warrior we'll Side Crew in the mail, I was like, this is the most epic shit in the fucking world. So like, I don't know. When Rev hit me up asking if they could uh, distribute Triple B stuff, I was like, oh man, it was so cool. I was just hoping in the back of my mind, I was like, oh, I hope I can go to the vault one day. And just see a wars and lighting in your voice cover. And, uh, so it was like a no brainer, like when they announce these shows, like fucking roll out, because it's like all my favorite bands playing and uh, my favorite label ever. So, definitely the biggest inspiration for me. What is, over the years, like from the time you've gotten into Rev until now, what is like your favorite or like your top, like few favorite, if you can't name one, Rev records that have come out? Shit. Oh, man. And I don't asking a record nerd that is, is, is like an impossible question. Oh, yeah. Um, I gotta go with, honestly, Warzone Lower East Side Crew is absolutely number one. It's the coolest cover. It's just really a picture of Todd Youth and Rabies. And it just says Warzone, like this most, most badass writing. Uh, the insert, well, here's why mine is like shit. 
Because like I got mine in, it was like the first press of the blue labels, and on the uh, dust leaf there was a peace sign, and it said, uh, "Work together, we must all unite." And like and I don't know, it's like we are all equal. It's like the coolest shit ever, and I just couldn't help but think like, "Fucking rabies did this shit! Oh my god! <laughs> like this is so cool." Other than that, I gotta go with the together comp. Uh, you got Warzone, Super Touch, GB, Youth of Today, just the side by side, bold. Best fucking bands. Again, cool layout. What the fuck else? Um, yeah, it's, those are probably my top two. Um, Chung King, just like the, just the novelty is like the coolest part. Um, when I got that, I was like, never gonna leave, let this thing leave my sight. Did you have one of the elusive copies? There's oh. like what six left in the world? Six. Oh. I heard there's like six. Um, there's oh, some ridiculous know. number of like there's like barely any left. I got mine. In the fall of 2008, I was, I was like 20 and I got mine. And uh, actually, like, my friend Ned was like, you are the youngest person, I think, that has a Chunk King in the world. Which, I was like, yes. I got that actually from the Drummer Foundation. He had it, and he knew I wanted it, and he was just like, buy me a MacBook, and you can have it. So I went to the Apple store in Boston, bought a brand new MacBook. It came with a free iPod Touch, and I got the student discount with it, so it ended up being like 800 bucks best deal in the world. Uh, yeah, nobody's allowed to like touch it when they're at my house. Uh, the only person I want to touch it is Ned, and that's about it. Nobody's allowed to. I don't blame I mean, you. People can see, but they can't touch. I don't blame you. And uh, those are probably cool. Oh, another cool one, I actually just got this about a month and a half ago. It's not like a Rev release, but Rev did it. They used it today, Batman stamp on orange. That's a fucking cool one, because they just made those straight for toys, so. Rev's coolest label ever, just all around. Everything they did was just the shit. Every band's awesome. Everything's like the best, so. All right. Thanks, Rev, for existing. What was your favorite band that's that's played so far this weekend? Or who do you think's had the best cool. set? Best set? Reaction-wise, best reaction-wise was GV by far. They were awesome. Uh, they sounded great, but personally, I had an out-of-body experience when Into Another played. That shit was like, fucking awesome. It was like next level. But apparently I, I feel like it's going to change in about an hour when Quicksand hits the stage. Since apparently they're the secret guest. But yeah, Into Another I'd say was... I, I'll go with Into Another. But every band's been fucking awesome. Shouts to In My Eyes. You guys are awesome too. Love you, Pete. <laughs> what it is that we're doing here... <laughs> he says, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, when I got into hardcore, I was a confused young guy, and, uh, and probably there's quite a few, at least one, in the audience. And it explained life to me in such a way that it was simple and made sense. So plan your stage dives carefully, and, uh, but don't be one of those guys that gets caught in the middle of the song, in between songs by yourself, and asking people to catch you. That's not a good look. Go for it. Just do it. This goes out to Jordan Cooper, who's got a revelation records and made all this shit possible. Take a little longer, Jordan Cooper. Just a little bit, sustain it a little bit longer. That's the sound in my heart when I think of uh, and I also want to take a second, uh, oh, graduates of 2012, <laughs> to thank these wonderful people that I'm playing with tonight, and how beautiful and special each one of them are. Sergio Vega.
Um, this song we're gonna play is uh, by one of uh, my favorite bands, and uh, I think probably a lot of you guys would know it because uh, I think there's a hardcore connection between the lyrics of Marcy and uh, the power of hardcore. 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 You're watching Hardcore Collective. Boom.